Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I finally figured out <laughs> how to defeat Glare by tipping it against my uh, tablet. But uh, so the amazing <laughs> just happened. I'm, I'm usually not that big of a fan of the Netflix Marvel shows, but whoever the hell makes season three of Daredevil just got me to sit through an entire episode about Karen Page's problems in a cold town with her family's diner. I, I've, boy, when I saw that, I go, oh, it's really gonna be. Just her in her hometown, like the whole episode. I mean, there's a little fight at the end, but yeah, they, they, they did a good job. I'm, I'm really into this uh, uh, season. Uh, but anyway, um, so I read this uh, several hours ago. <laughs> My last video, I reviewed it right after I read the book, and this one, I just sat on it. it. It was like a chore, but the thing is, this book is a chore. Like, literally, it's a chore for the writer. Um, with SJW Books, the entire point is to hire the person you know hey we just hired person x from you know a disadvantaged identity group y for book z and then once they've done that and they've got a little bit of attention out of it then it's just like oh now we gotta we gotta make the book <laughs> they didn't even want the book they just wanted the backpats for the hiring it's it's kind of like uh you know in the marines we do a lot of uh, hikes and, and a lot of them at least at pendleton there was a lot of mountains and everyone thinks that getting to the top of the mountain is the hard part. And it is challenging, but uh, getting down is the part where people would get injured. Um, that's the part where, you know, you fall and you tumble for like 20 feet. That's where you twist your ankle, you twist your knee. That's where there's so much friction because you got 150 pounds on your back that the entire, all the skin on your heel will just slip right off. Um, so uh, one of the things that you, you constantly feel is... When the writer is like, oh, so i got to write a story now. <laughs> like, to them, the movie ended with them being hired and there being an announcement on io9.com. The actual writing of the book is just some weird chore that they have to do as a technicality to get paid. You know, you get hired and you turn in your voucher. I'd like to be paid for the story I was hired for. Oh, great. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so you have to turn in the script. You're like, oh. get to that uh so this is shuri um <laughs> a mini a book that no one knows why it exists I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what the sale sales figures this book is not meant to sell <laughs> like what the hell is this it, it, it's completely pointless to talk about the actual reaction of people reading it because it wasn't meant to be read so it's obviously was uh, not uh, meant to be uh, bought. But uh, anyway, just kudos. Kudos for just having all this awkward dead space where the logo was going to be because you wanted to do a banner honoring Stan Lee. By the way, you could have done the logo, make it a little skinnier. Mo I really like this. I really like this. I feel like a teacher or something like that. Um, you have Shuri up here, and then you make this at the very top. Okay, so... Uh, this is they're doing the uh, so anyway, I did, the main thing that's coming out of this. So I had to I had to recalibrate a little bit because I roasted the hell out of the first one, and the second one I go huh, I don't even know I'm just enjoying it. I must be the only person. Everyone's like, this book is terrible. <laughs> you read too many comics and your standards have gotten shot. And I remember back in the day when it was like Siskel and Ebert was big, uh, especially um, Siskel was pretty consistent. But Ebert, especially as he got older, his like decisions on whether a, to recommend a movie or not were really, really weird. Like it would seem like a negative review. And then at the very end, he would be like, oh, but I really like this guy's shoes. Go see it. And you're like, what? And I just I always felt like there's a point where you should almost like have a limit on how many movies you can see i mean he's been reviewing movies for like 30 years he's seen thousands of movies. those those uh movie reviewers you know like back in the day before everyone had a you know website that did it like they would see like three or four a day it was absolutely insane so now actually i'm doing a lot less i'm doing one or two per day whereas i used to do um three to four um but uh, I'm really thinking there's going to be a lot more Marvel before SJW because those aren't really reviews so much as um, like kind of like history and analysis. Because I'll be doing books I've already read before. So uh, anyway, as you can see from this dynamic panel, this is 
resembles in no way anything that has ever been a comic. By the way, <laughs> this is the lead character. And there's a couple other panels where... Now, does this look... I think sure he's supposed to be somewhere between, I don't know, 15 to 19. Tell me that doesn't look like a like a 51-year-old uh, divorce lawyer. Like, he just looks so old. But anyway, this this uh, book is weird, and every single part of it is weird. For, for example, the only way most people know Shuri is as the is as the you know snarky kid sister from the movie but she's not like that at all ever now she does follow the i think it's the christopher priest um uh continuity from like 10 years ago but nobody cares like this was obviously made because of the movie and then she doesn't look or act like the actress or the character from the movie and then, you know, it was the Black Panther movie, so the whole thing is like, hey, it's Black Panther's sister. Let, this is the introduction. Shuri is the young sister of T'Challa, the Black Panther. Okay, so everyone's heard of Black Panther. The thing made like $700 million. I think it's the number one or two movie of the year. And he, you don't have Black Panther right here where you're talking about Black Panther. You have Black Panther over here, almost completely obscured by this giant uh, text box. And then we get into, sorry, I need a second. In the first issue, she uh, shot her brother, the king, into space. And then she's like, all right, see you in 15 days when you come back. And then on day like 15, she's like, they're like everyone's like, hey, is your brother, the king, coming back? She's like, oh, yeah, I should totally check on that. And then she just kind of languidly find out that, uh, the king and uh, I forget what the I'm blanking on the other guy's name that they were basically dying and aspirating and breathing in each other's vomit and piss as you know they starve to death and asphyxiate and then she's like so the whole issue is like Hi, I'm I guess so she literally she found a witch to go find them in the spirit realm by the way witches and spirits cannot bring you oxygen or food like you can't just go on the astral plane like you actually have to go there physically and get him so then uh since they realize this is a book for no one <laughs> and there's they seem to be going for people who only know the movies they're like oh yeah Groot remember Groot and, and Rocket Raccoon yeah yeah except for in the thing that drove me absolutely nuts they keep showing both Rocket and Groot as green now, I'm not reading any of the Guardians of the Galaxy books right now. I don't know if Rocket Raccoon is part Skrull now, or he was infused with sap from Groot, so he didn't die and he's green. But he's green. He's green there. He's green there. Uh, he's uh, regular colors here, so you go, oh, maybe that was just the light on the inside of the ship. But if there was a green hue to all the light, then it wouldn't be like a bright red. Like, it's... Just this is again, this is like Marvel. Marvel started as Timely and Timely started in 1939. I didn't know that off the top of my head. I just looked it up right before. So you are going into your 80th year and you have forgotten almost everything about how to make comics. The, the, the Marvel comics right now are Marvel in name only. Um, so there's a giant bug and uh, since she loves the science, she uses the science to... Uh, uh, easily pr pretty much defeat him uh, uh she makes sure to be congratulated and that's it this is just this is a completely trash book they you know, then they cut back to this man one person per that's a safe bet person and uh oh rocket raccoon's green again okay oh yeah this this is the uh, 51 year old divorce lawyer or a 16 year old main character whatever nothing matters why does this i feel like if this evaporated you wouldn't even be angry you'd just be like you know like you 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 grab it and it just disintegrates and just into vapor you'd be like yeah that's probably for the best for everyone yeah i can yeah i spent four dollars but huh, like this is terrible 
I was going to say, who is this for? It's for no one. The, the entire, this entire book is just, you know, taking a selfie at the top of a hill. And now you're like, oh, now I got to walk to the, I'm parked down. In the, okay, so now we actually got to walk down. And that's what it is, you know? Nobody cared. Nobody's interested. <laughs> and there's this, like, weird subplot about Aretha Franklin. What did she say? I was in that thing. I had to sing to her or I'd be dead. That... That Aretha Franklin song, it liked music. Okay, cool. Yeah, and here's the next issue. Yeah, do you remember the character from the movie that everyone liked? Yeah, here's her completely different in every single way. So yeah, so this was a, I read a comic that was not supposed to be read and I bought a comic that was not supposed to be bought. So. I guess I'm the jerk. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the, uh, the Patreon, the GoFundMe, and the Indiegogo. And I'll have uh, more new comic reviews up today. And then I'm going to do a little traveling. But I'm going to see uh, Aquaman and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Probably see Bumblebee, but I'm not going to do a video about that. And uh, uh, I got the... Uh, My Hero Academia. Oh, speaking of which. So, now that I'm kind of wrapping things up, and obviously this is the holidays, so some things, you know, just got to wait till after the holidays. I've been going through some old emails, and oh my gosh, a couple things. Number one, fan art. All of this fan art that I didn't see from like six months ago, I'm emailing, I'm like, this is cool. I literally just saw your email right now. It's been a pretty crazy year. I always kind of thought I was keeping track of my emails, but it's pretty clear for like six months after the tortious interference, I was just like, I don't, I don't know what, just go crazy, spinning all these plates, hoping they don't crash. But I missed a lot of stuff, like some really nice emails, some amazing art. So if you ever sent me anything, you spent a whole weekend working on some fan art, and then you sent it to me, and I just never responded. Uh, I'm not being a jerk. I just literally didn't see it. So now I got a backlog of like 1,000 unread emails. So uh, don't feel bad or weird uh, about uh, sending me uh, something that you sent before. Uh, that would be very helpful. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll have more new comic reviews up tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.